1620, while the Mayflower was in Provincetown, 18 of its men sailed in a small shallop, searching for a place to live. They came to present-day East Ham, where they were met by a group of Nosset. After a brief but violent encounter, the English left towards today's Plymouth. In 2020, we remember this first encounter. We explore its meanings for today and tomorrow. My name is Joanna Hollick, and I'm the coordinator of the Sunset Series. I'm here today with Alyssa Harris. Alyssa is a member of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe, and she just graduated from Mashpee High School. Welcome, Alyssa. So you mentioned last time you were here that you speak a language that only 15 people in the world speak. What is this language? So it's the Wampanoag language, and to be exact, there's nobody that's fluent, but there are 15 people who can have a conversation. So me, I'm not fluent. I can, I can hold a conversation a little bit, um, but there, yeah, about 15 to 20 people, they can actually have a conversation, whereas most people, they can only say a few words like greetings, hello, goodbye, thank you, stuff like that. But I can just say a little more than that. And what made you want to learn Wampanoag? Um, I would never really, it was not that I wanted to because I was six when I started learning. So my mom is a grant writer and she helped fundraise for the language project. So because she did that, I knew about immersion camps and language classes that went on. So I learned them and because I was so young, I also learned a lot more quickly than others. So is the Wampanoag language something that you use often? Do you speak it with your mom or your family? Or is it more something that you only speak in classes or certain situations? I would speak it if I could, but because there's not many people that speak it, I can't. So really the only time I do is in language class. And where did you take these language classes? Most of them these past few years have been at school, but I've also taken them um, on the tribal land in Mashpee, there have been classes there. And then there have been immersion camps where they have venues and we stay over for the weekend. So there was one like at a camp um, and on the military base. And are these relatively popular classes? Like do a lot of your friends also have an interest in learning it or is it less of a popular thing? Um, during the immersion camps, they were kind of, there were kind of a lot of people and then in the language classes that were only a day, they were kind of small up until this recent year. At school, there was um, a level one class that I was not in, I was in a higher level, but that class was really crowded. And um, is it correct that the Wampanoag language had kind of completely died out and then was brought back as part of a um, trying to bring it back and give it life again? And is that what these classes are part of? Yeah, um, the first or the last fluent speaker died uh, over 150 years ago, and it's because of intergenerational trauma. People like um, relatives, older relatives, like grandparents, didn't want to teach younger children the language because they didn't want them to get they didn't want them to get tortured for it, basically, because um, they did it at boarding schools and they were forced to assimilate. So then the language was brought back in the early 1900s, and it was actually brought back by the King James Bible. Wow, so do you think that the language will continue to gain in popularity and people will learn to become fluent again? Or do you think that, uh, as you mentioned, there's not a lot of people who speak it and that there's still societal pressure that prevents people from learning it fluently and using it daily? I definitely think it'll grow. It's been growing a lot lately, especially because we have the language classes and we have an immersion school on our tribal land. So I think it's going in the right direction. That's good to hear. And I know that in addition to learning the Wampanoag language, you also spend some time working at Plymouth Plantation. How long have you worked there? Uh, this is my fourth year. And what do you do at your job there? 
So I'm a historical interpreter and I wear traditional clothing and uh, educate people on native history. I do cooking, I do crafts, and I also teach people about modern day information because down there we're not acting. People misinterpret what we're doing because on the English side they act and pretend they're in 1620, but on our side we're in 2020. What are some of the other in misinterpretations that people have about you or incorrect stereotypes that they may hold? Um, a lot of people think that we didn't know how to survive and people will come in and be like, oh, you guys, you must have been suffering, freezing to death in the cold, running out of food. But if anything, we were thriving. I think we were living a luxury compared to now. Um, obviously now we have more technology, but back then... Um, the winter was actually the easiest time of year. We worked between one and three hours a day. The rest of the day could be whatever you want. And work for us wasn't working nine to five, like something you didn't like. It was fun things such as weaving, uh, making clothing, sewing, fun things that people do in their free time nowadays. And is there a particular activity or task that is especially enjoyable to you? Uh, most of the time I do cooking and weaving. Sometimes I also sew bags and do pottery, um, which, like I said, that's considered work, but I do it when I'm bored. What kind of things do you like to cook? Um, everybody's favorite that I make is, it's I kind of cheat with it. It's bread, so it's cornmeal, um, uh, maple syrup, walnuts, and sunflower seeds. And then um, I tell people I fry it in sunflower oil, which I should, that's what we would have had, but now I just, I fry it in vegetable oil, and I add cinnamon and sugar, which I don't tell people, but <laughs> I cheat a little bit. <laughs> that sounds great. So is, um, are there a lot of people from the Wampanoag tribe who work at Plymouth Plantation, or is it a re relatively small group? Um, this past year, there have been a lot of, a lot more people that have worked there, mostly younger kids that have just gotten hired. But I will say it used to be a lot, there used to be a lot more people working there, but it was before I started working. Now there's a lot of non-natives that work there too. And is there anything else that you want to say um, about the Wampanoag language or working at Plymouth Plantation or some of the differences between your lifestyle today and the traditional lifestyle? Um, also, working at Plymouth Plantation because it's my culture and because that's what we would have done. It doesn't even it doesn't even feel like work. It feels like summer camp. It, if anything, I forget that it's a job. It's more something that I do for fun. If if I don't have work, I'll only go to work just because it gives me something to do and it's actually enjoyable. My name is Joanna Hollick and I'm the coordinator for the Sunset Series with East Ham 400. I'd like to give you a brief update on our plans for the rest of the summer regarding the Sunset Series. Each Sunday, a presenter will read an excerpt from Ian Saxine's book, The Story of the First Encounter at Nauset, and some of the other episodes for the week will reflect on themes that correlate to the topics that Ian discussed in that chapter of his book. Other episodes will continue to focus on current events, important dates in history, and meanings for today. If you're interested in finding a specific episode or a series of episodes that are related thematically, you can now do so on both our website and our YouTube channel. To find these thematic groupings on our website, you can go to the Sunset Series page on eastham400.org and then scroll down until you see a list of all of our thematic groupings and click on the name of the topic that you would like to look at. You can also find these same groupings on our YouTube page if you go to our channel page on YouTube, East Ham 400, and then click the playlist tab. Thank you.